background so we will we'll use for um, the, in this particular project the watercolors um, watercolor paper uh, masking tape to get beautiful um, frames for our painting and as well uh, a little bit either of the tempera or acrylic black paint now um, we will start with creating the frames for our painting so let's move the Acrylic of uh, the watercolor paints, and here following the same distance, we'll be applying our masking thing pieces on the paper. So, again, um, this is uh, optional, you don't need to do it. I like to do it because I think that to have those nice white frames makes a big difference at the end, it just adds to your artwork so now we want to make sure that we can see the artwork well and we will start working on it so having the pencil i will create the silhouette of the tree so i want to have it a little bit on the side right and again don't worry the whole surface will be covered with the paint so if you have extra lines that you don't like just put another one so when you create the tree, you have to make sure that the branches that you will be using are following this kind of geometrical transition. Okay, so here, here, another cut here, and maybe there, see? So almost like a stained glass, I like the effect. And I exaggerate them because I want to have more of those cuts here, okay? So this one is okay, another one will come here. Um, what about getting another one here? That's, oh, it's too wide here. So you see, I will exchange it a little bit. And then I certainly need another one on this side here, 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 and there. Maybe another one coming here. So you see, it's quite rich and beautiful. And nobody, nobody will doubt that we have, doubt that this is a tree, right? So here, here, here. Okay, and then maybe another one still, I think, adding here, adding there will be good. And then another one maybe following here good so it's plenty plenty now like this good oh do you think so? no maybe maybe one branch here so you see we do it very spontaneously we decide on this spot okay good so that's just the silhouette now from there i want to look at the colors that i will be applying here and i think i will go with one color here another one there another one there i definitely need the blue in the back but i will start with very intense red here so i'm going and again you can go on top of those lines right and we really go very very fast with um, quite intense uh, paint application so that means um, you have to use quite a bit of of um, watercolors here um, a little bit of water you don't need to have a huge amount because we want to really make this color a bit darker now i don't want to have one horizontal line i like to have the effect of the line being placed on the diagonal line here like this okay so you see we have beautiful diagonal line here i make sure you see with a little bit heavier paint that means less water more watercolors or more pigment applied here okay so that will be the first color i still can enrich it by getting really really thick paint well thick considerable because it's watercolor paint now i'm going now for the yellow color and the yellow color you see my brush is not perfectly clean so that's why it gives me kind of orange color right so i want to have this color here and i will move it to slightly opposite direction so i'm going here with beautiful yellow you see opposite direction so here we have one diagonal line here we will have another one but not exactly diagonal it's the curvy uh, or organic i call it diagonal line so see the yellow and i'm trying not to um, start with the section where i have red because when i will have when i will place my yellow next to the red and mix them a little bit which color will i get well there's a new color that you get 
micro mixing uh, red with uh, yellow. Correct, we get orange color. And do I want to have orange? Maybe at the end, but not right now. I'm still not so sure. So I'm really working with this beautiful luminous um, yellow. And when I say luminous, that means that the color um, looks like a glass, something very, very glossy. You see, uh, it's, it just, it just brings this brightness of the sun in into my painting. See, I'm still not touching trout lilies. I try not to touch my red color. I'm very careful because I want to really have the pure, pure yellow here. Okay. Notice that I'm crossing the lines uh, that indicate where the uh, silhouette of the tree will be placed later on. And, and you can still see through uh, the lines, the pencil lines or graphite lines, right? And I say graphite line because graphite is used as a lead for our pencils, okay? So here, you see, I'm already coming on the top of the red and what is happening here, notice, or oh, now I want to slightly blend them because I like to have nice transition. So I do it now on purpose, it's not an accident. They still, you see, organically will blend one into another, but it's more controlled. And that's what I want to have. I don't want to have anything. Like you see, I apply now a little bit more of this red, raspberry red here, because I want to make sure that I'm in control where the direction, where the paint will move. Okay, so you see, yes, it's coming beautifully like this. Fantastic. Okay, so now I need another color here and I will need let me still think that maybe you can come here with a tiny bit more of it here. And then I want to still have a little bit more of this beautiful red coming here. Good. Now from there, I want to have a beautiful blue and I really want to have blue. That means I, I can't have yellow color on it or maybe even a little bit of the purple. Yeah, the purple would be fantastic here as an addition. So especially next to the yellow color. And this is because yellow color and purple color belong to complementary pair of colors. One color placed next to another um, brightens each other, right? So that's what we want to have. And then we go with nice diagonal line, again, going in opposite direction here. So I'm crossing the trunk of the tree here. Ooh la la, I really like the effect. Whoa, the, do you see how bright the yellow becomes once we have the purple color placed next to it? Okay, so this is good. Still a little bit more. Okay, a little bit more. La 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 la, looks really, really good. And then which color should be placed next to the purple color? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. I still don't know. Maybe, maybe blue, what do you think? Should we place the blue there? Maybe, maybe the blue would be a good addition. Oh, I think so, look at this. So again, hard, but <laughs> hardly, but we still can see. Not so easily though, you see, depends how I apply the blue. If I apply it quite heavily, then I still see actually, yes, I do see the silhouette Um, or when I have less of it, it'll be a little bit less visible. So you see here, oh my goodness, I love the colors. I love to play with those colors. So those two, blue and purple, they are more or less similar, right? Two cool colors, while this red and yellow are warm colors. So I have a, in the half of the painting, half of it, the top one, consists of cool colors, while the bottom part, the second half, belongs to the warm colors. Okay, good. Now we want to connect our purple with yellow, you see? So when you mix those colors together, you get kind of brownish color almost. Wow, good to see it. It's, it's a nice experiment for all of us. Okay, here I want to still come, you see, and apply a little bit more of the purple. And guys, we are ready to work with the silhouette of our tree, okay? So now, the next step will be, we don't even need to, to let the paint dry, we can, uh, if you have more time, but if you are in the hurry, 
you can go right away straight to the black acrylic or tempera paint. Don't use any water, don't use any water at all. Just follow the lines where, the where you already created the silhouette of the tree. Go on the top and nicely cover it with the paint, okay? If like here, if I have the paint that is still, like you see, uh, quite a bit of water on the surface, it can happen that the paint will bleed, I call it. So that means that the water will move it slightly on the sides. Um, but if that happens, just use paper towel on the top and uh, dry up the particular section, right? So you see, I'm just following the lines of the graphite of our pencil and inside of them, I'm placing some paint. Now, again, don't use any water. Try to use a flat brush like this one here. Um, it's easier to apply the paint, okay? So remember that the trunk is always thicker on the bottom. So even when uh, you already created the lines, if you think that it will be better to come back and make the trunk thicker or add certain branches, you certainly are welcome to do it, right? That's your painting. You see, on there where are this, the, the top of the branches, I make sure that I use the side of the brush and here I can go a little bit thicker. Okay, I'm improvising here. I'm still adding some new elements because I like to. I always like to bring some new changes. You see here, I'm adding here the another branch. I think that would be good for our tree. Now, I think that would be nice to have a branch here. You see, and then I'm adding the addition here. Um, maybe uh, maybe I should go for the skinny brush. This one is uh, rounded, so it's called filbert brush. Rounded like semi-rounded on the top, you see? And here I can create the skinnier lines. You can certainly choose even skinnier brush than I use. That's it's up to you. You are the artist and you make the decision for yourself, right? So you see, I still want to use this thicker brush, a wider one here for those basic parts here. When I later want to come, like you see, and create this, um, the smaller branches, I certainly can move to, to the skinnier brush, okay? You see, even here. Yeah, maybe this part will be even a little bit heavier. Look at this, how good it looks. Really, really, really bright and beautiful. And this is because you use black on the top of those luminous, beautiful colors. Luminous, again, having brightness, illuminating or beautiful projecting towards us the itself right and exactly like, like you would look at the glass colored glass so it has the same effect and the sun would shine on it so that's what you would be the luminosity that you would uh, see and that's what is happening here you see make sure that the branches on the top are a little bit skinnier than there where they grow from the trunk right very very important because the branches have to be skinnier right this is thicker here, so you can always come. You see, that looks good because the branches are really, really tiny, tiny, tiny bit. I think we can add here another one. Ooh, got a little bit too thick, but that's okay, you see? So I'm getting here, try to get it skinnier. I think this can go a little bit thicker here. And as you can see, we are almost done with our tree. I really like what has happened here with our painting, okay? So now, the only thing that I want to do, I want to let it dry. And once this is dry, guys, then you can remove the masking tape. You see, when I remove it, you can see how nicely those edges will look like, you see? Wow, the colors work so well. I'm really very, very pleased, you see? In some places, the paint bleeded. Um, that's okay. You just have to take into account that such things will happen. Okay, I'm going here. So I don't want to cover your image. And look at this. Isn't it not beautiful? <laughs> I'm really proud of this painting. So guys, I hope that you enjoyed watching it with me. And now pick up the watercolor paper and start working on it. Have a good time. Bye.